So so far so good. You guys been having a good show. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's cool. been uh, it's been really good. What have you seen that's been exciting? Uh, for me, the thing that's exciting is that um, to hear you know Amazon, Google, Salesforce, Open Text, to hear all these vendors talking about the same thing. Hmm. You know, talking about the evolution of computing, you know, towards social computing in one way or another, and how we're in a different era of computing right now. So I think, and that's an affirmation for us because we're, you know, sit here with this hypothesis and basically have that. Right. Okay. And what, do, where, do you, where do you think the transition took off? Where we kind of became, went from you know, the classic network computing to kind of where it got to be more social? It you know, happened, I've been trying to see that inflection yeah, point. It happened on the web and it happened with the consumer. Okay. So the con basically, you know, Generation Y, Generation X, you know, MySpace, Facebook, all that kind of social interaction was the first real strong evidence of it. And I probably think that to some degree, you know, just the use of um, mobile phones and, and portable technical devices, you know, people SMSing, so you can see kids just SMSing each other. So yes, it's I mean, yeah, mobility and momentum. Yeah. I mean, the viral effect of the, uh, the, the, the web and the collaboration in conjunction with uh, the mobility factor in terms of your, your persistency and the ability to be around. Mm. Those are two, two key areas, I believe. Okay. Uh, and do you, um, where does the idea from spacious come from? I mean, it's the most important thing. Where does the, yeah. the, the nut come from? The, the well, we've, we've actually been, uh, this, the, the, the products evolved over the last two and a half years. Um, and uh, its background is, uh, stems from uh, the online directory businesses. So we've done a fair amount of work with um, Australia's largest um, uh, directory, online directory provider, a company called Census, and um, that's where a lot of the ideas came from in terms of um, people's ability to be able to collaborate from a, a consumer to consumer, business to consumer, and business to business perspective. And as we've evolved that thinking by delivering direct directory type solutions um, to a couple of companies, our ideas around where computing is going were overlaid on top. So we started to say, okay, let's um, reinvest in ourselves and create a product that will um, allow us to uh, you know, deliver this uh, 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 social collaboration solution uh, as a platform to enterprises. So what is Spacious? Um, Spacious is a um, uh, social um, computing platform for the enterprise. It allows organizations to take um, existing information assets and um, uh, deliver them into the spacious platform um, and allows people to, be, uh, to socially collaborate around the information that they have and also bring in information from the web, other you know, online assets, and mash them up with, um, with uh, existing um, uh, SOA type services in a very, very f um, flat type of a structure. So it flattens out the information that organizations have in their, um, it, with, it, within their enterprise, allows people to mash that information up with external information to generate new information, which is this layer of metadata, um, which captures all of the informal interactions, um, and then share those informal interactions um, in, a, in a persistent way, you know, building um, organizational knowledge. Yeah, what we, what we discovered is that, well, through Web 2.0 and Enterprise 2.0, there's basically functions and features that you get from it as well as applications, so wikis and blogs are really applications, but functions and features such as tagging or even searching across data, um, reviewing, rating, voting, all those kind of really good things. Um, they're kind of functions and features that, that the Web 2.0 brought about for us that we'd like to see across all kinds of business applications, whether it's you know to tag a wiki entry or tag a customer from a CRM. So it's about organising that information, working collaboratively, and even a lot of those social networking type functions are features and functions. And that's that's a big part of what Spacious tries to bring to bear is the fact that we're actually injecting those kind of functions into legacy business apps through our platform. Now I could ask you more about what it does, but it might be easier just to. Take a look at the demo. There, are yeah, you, are you yeah. live and good to go? Yeah, yeah. I'm, All right, I'm good. Let's, let's I'm just going to go zoom on in and take a I'm look. Just going straight into it then. Yeah. So this is just a, you know, white sheet of paper install of, of Spacious. This particular demo here is uh, one that we did for um, a customer in New York, which is based around high school systems. So um, in this particular instance, what we were trying to 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 um, demonstrate to 
to the customers how students, teachers, administrators, um, schools um, and parents can all collaborate together and share information. So just to give you, I'll just first log in. So authentication is of obviously crucial importance if you're talking about integrating yeah. outside services with an enterprise. Absolutely. But what kind of uh, protocols are you using to protect data as it moves back and forth? Well, it's, it's the multitude. So we're using a lot of the enterprise security so we can um, plug into LDAP models, etc. so we can honor groups and roles and all those kind of things. But we also um, have an additional security layer there. Um, I wouldn't say it's additional as far as complexity. It actually sits above that, which is kind of based around the social and uh, Web2 concept. So the fact that I want to share or I want to provide access to people within a closed community or group, which does not fit into one of the um, enterprise groups. So we can actually handle the, the whole concept of anyone can see this or only people that I um, allow to see this or um, on a, a LDAP groups. And, and we do integrate into LDAP um, uh, uh, open ID and a whole bunch of other things like that. Okay. And then we can also plug in um, more uh, rigorous security, multi-factor security. So having uh, a plug-in that provides you know, two-factor authentication um, would give us even a higher level of um, security based on a particular client's needs and that's you know, easily pluggable. Okay. That's, uh, that's certainly important for if you dealing with any uh, Financial institutions that have to deal with FFIAC compliance, etc. Yeah, exactly right. Sorry, I'm running the wrong version. I just realized. <laughs> Sorry, give me one second. Sure. I don't think the resolution of this is such that we'll be catching your various. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm nearly there. Uh, I'm assuming most of your uh, users won't actually have to be able to shell. Sorry, <laughs> we'll have to be able. No, to no. This is just I'm running. Uh, this is I'm running on my local machine. So sure. Um, you SSH in it. Sorry. Are you are you actually you know shelling and get, get it into your local machine that you're running running this from somewhere so, else? So I'm running the server. Yeah, I can. But at the moment, I'm just running the server locally uh, okay. to keep things simple for me, just in case we lose our network connection, yeah. which has been not unusual. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's actually been the rule of the day so far. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think I've gotten through a single uh, demo without somebody actually losing it, uh, okay. which. I imagine it's going to make a lot of people think about maybe having dedicated bandwidth when they come next time. Well, having, yeah. Having I broadband mean, cards or that, that kind of thing. It's a real problem. I mean, you know, we, we've uh, ran, ran by it a few times now. And so, to your point, as you, you asked a little earlier, when did you see the swing to social computing? We just, if you look at that, that analogy of the day, you lose your internet connection, you feel disjointed, you don't feel connected. Mm -hmm. you, you can personally compute, not social compute. Mm -hmm. so you're cut off. Well, it's, it's uh, when the uh, Google product manager talked about uh, internet connectivity five years ago versus today. He was happy to see it then. Now he's actually frustrated to be without it. Right. We've gotten so used to it. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are we looking at? Here? Okay, so I just did a quick search for um, students, and I found some information on students. And you know, we're looking at different types of uh, information, whether it's a space. Now, a space within spaces is mm -hmm. just information either abstracted up from. Uh, anonymous information within Spacious, so it could be a topic that we just want to collaborate around, okay. or it could be um, actually information coming from a back office system that's that's uh, represented as a space. So in this instance here, it could be Tim Student, which is the first entry here, has come from a student administration system. But what that allows us to do is once we have that in Spacious, that's where we can start injecting all the functionality we were talking about earlier, like tagging the student, adding metadata to the student, um, and mashing up other information. So we can be bringing that information from an admin system, plus you know mapping some data. We could be bringing information from a report system, um, you know, a student report card type system. So from within here, I'm, I actually did a search, and I can actually start doing things such as tagging or adding a comment um, to, to this particular entry. So that I'm doing that from my search results. Um, we have this concept of a space having, um, a, 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 I guess, a, there's a type of space. So um, the student, Tim student here is a student space. We have some um, some uh, some school spaces down the here. So, yeah, so that's okay. all configurable. So the, the space types and, and etc. are all configurable. And we also have a state of a space. So we've got some green bars here representing a community space versus orange being a claimed space. And do you suggest tags? So oh yeah, definitely. So because you don't have the huge amount of yep. misspellings, etc. Well, the tags help help organise the information. So you know whether um, I'm calling this person a student, you're calling them a pupil. 
you know, we can start to be talking different languages and find the same information. So it's really important. So, so I'll just jump into the, the student record here. So this is, like I said, very simple data, but it starts to demonstrate some of the power we have here. We can add different types of widgets to our space. So a space has a hierarchy. We have the space here. We have pages, which are represented by these tabs along here. And then pages can have um, separate pieces of content. At each level, we can define who has access to that um, entity. So in this instance here, I'm logged in as an administrator. I can see everything. But we've got a teacher space here that only the teachers and the student can see, a parent space that only the parents and the student can see. And we've also got a PTA page here that we custom created. Now, can you take it um, to the enterprise space, where you might, say, have one spot for legal, one spot for compliance? Sure, IT sure, admins. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So if, if you do a search for compliance, what happens? So in that instance, you will only find information that you're allowed to see depending on your user access within the system. So again, uh, everyone has, either through LDAP or through the internal rights of the system, you have basically um, what accesses or roles have been assigned to you as a user. And just to show you how that works, if I want to create a new page here, and say, uh, and just to talk a little bit about the pages, we have different types of page types. So these are called page renderers. Again, total plug-in architecture here. We can have a page that's a blog. We can have a discussion page, portals, RSS feeds. Uh, our default page is our um, uh, kind of the uh, widget rendering uh, portal view of it. But what that enables us to do is, like, for example, we can dedicate a whole page to um, Siebel data or Salesforce data or something else, mm -hmm. but it's now shared on the same screen real estate as you know Siebel and Salesforce customer data for the same customer can live together or um, a Cognos report for um, a Siebel information on the screen at the same time. So everyone's looking at the same surface or the same piece of glass but depending on your um, roles in the system you'll see different information. So if I'm creating a new, a new data here just to show you how that works this is basically how we handle the um, the, the access to the system. By default, everyone has, so me um, creating this page entity, I can determine <coughs> who has access to the page I am creating, right? So at the moment, of, uh, by default, everyone has access. But I can turn that off and I can just allow myself to have access, so it's a private page. Or I can start um, adding uh, rights to the system, such as me and this, the person who owns this space, or anyone that's related to this space, and now we're creating a community space. And then we can start honouring some of the um, LDAP groups. So we've got about half a dozen LDAP groups here, teachers, school admins, supervisors, etc. So I can provide access to any of those. But I can get even more granular by switching to advanced access and providing you know, only read access to, let's say, teachers and parents, but me and the space owner have got full read, write and destruction um, access. So we can get really, really detailed to the information. Sure. That so we to present. your point in the enterprise environment, say you had a cross-functional uh, steering committee on compliance, and even that had layers of subcommittees, that you could, you could stratify the access to that information based on the committee group and the uh, access that they would have in, in either of those committee groups. Now how do you um, differentiate this from, say, uh, services like SharePoint, which is getting a lot of uh, social layers at this very conference, or, say, uh, enterprise wikis, which are also that are on market? Or where do you see this being different? How do you see it being similar? Okay. So as far as SharePoint's concerned, SharePoint, um, it, it's, it's a really heavyweight Product, so it takes you know quite a bit to get that up and running. Whereas um, Spacious is very lightweight. You know, from you know me running the script, well, I was basically starting up the whole Spacious environment in 30 seconds. So that's that's one part of it. The other part of it is the architecture. So Spacious. Um, um, Spacious, like a lot of the wiki products you're talking about, have co has come from a Web 2.0 architecture. So it's it's a um, web oriented architecture from heart. It's not built from any legacy systems or anything like that. The other thing is that probably a huge differentiator for us to with, with either SharePoint or any other wiki products or collaboration products you're talking about is the way we can integrate into other systems. So sitting below Spacious, we have a next generation enterprise service bus um, called the Space Bus. So again, built on, Great but name. of course, um, <laughs> so based um, again on web oriented, uh, oriented architectures, it's, um, it uses a convention over configuration model, which is you know, uh, the big thing that the Web 2.0 has give, given us. And it's also got a, um, uh, uh, an event-based uh, event model, which means 
an event may occur in another system which will trigger an event to occur in Spacious. And a really good example we talk about is a custom gets created in Siebel, that event gets triggered. Yeah, Space Bus knows about it and creates an equivalent space for that, in, uh, for that customer and synchronizes those two spaces. And we haven't seen anyone that's doing that at the moment. So. So, and you anticipate uh, two questions. I mean, certainly the first is uh, about integration. Yep. Uh, you know, I think any enterprise user, certainly any, any enterprise administrator, is going to worry about how this ex you know, actually jives in with existing mm. legacy systems. If yep. you're a small business, if you're a small consultancy, you can start fresh. Yep. But if you've got to deal with a lot of legacy systems, how do you, you know, just add in one more layer of abstraction help and, and what provisions are within your offering to do yeah. that? And then I guess the other question is how you differentiate, um, say, uh, web-oriented architecture versus service-oriented architecture? So from a, uh, an enterprise perspective, if an organization has invested in service-oriented architecture, um, typically there's going to be a, uh, a fair amount of um, uh, infrastructure in terms of uh, interoperation. Um, with uh, with Spacious, Spacious basically allows them to, um, to leverage that, um, that SO, their investment in SOA and actually um, gain a, uh, uh, an improved return on investment through information reuse. So by um, uh, interoperating with existing service-oriented architecture or existing legacy uh, system APIs, Spacious allows them to deliver the information into this social collaboration layer, which allows people to collaborate around that information. But most importantly, it flattens out the information. It actually takes the information out of a, um, a, uh, a, a potentially complex vertical process and allows people to access information based on the current situation, based on their, their current set of circumstances and how they actually want to find that information versus having to go through you know, a standardized business process that was created at a point in time based on a particular uh, business problem that may or may not exist. You know, I just wanted to add to that the the um, the fact that you know an organisation that does have a lot of legacy systems, the problems they get they're going to have with spacious, they're going to have that problem with any product. So whether that that um, they've got legacy systems that um, have really good APIs that can just plug natively into an enterprise service bus such as a space bus or any other uh, any other ESB. Or if you go to, have to go to the extent of screen scraping, that's a problem that you're going to have anyway. So if you want to integrate, you know, you want to get information that you've got to screen scrape and get it into Excel, you're still going to have that same problem. So it's not something that is unique to us or, 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 or anyone else for that matter. I guess where we try to make it, I, uh, we feel that we're simplifying it in some ways, is that in, if you do decide to say, well, even if I have to uh, integrate into APIs or screen scrape, and then I want to bring that into an ESB, ESBs are generally heavyweight with lots of configuration. And we, we sort of bring to the table that, well, it doesn't have to be. You can use our service bus, and we use these you know, web-oriented um, architecture type models where it's very lightweight. You can integrate using RSS and other web standards that, um, that have em been embraced by the web community to make it work within your enterprise. And um, just the final thing there is that I think, you know, in my opinion, the really only successful um, service-oriented architecture has been the web through, the, uh, through Web 2.0. So that's really worked, whereas every enterprise that you talk to has struggled with a SOA implementation. And I think importantly, um, Spacious will consume web services, SOAP services, JMS, um, MQ, all of the RP, uh, XML, RPC, XML, all of the standard ways that organizations are looking to basically deliver services and where a lot of you know the investment has been over the last you know, five years in terms of service-oriented architecture, now this actually puts a tool in the organization's hands that exposes information to business people and allows them to create mashups from a combination of business information as well as, as, well as online services. So if you had an account in Siebel with the address, well, I could mash that up with a, a Google Map, and now I have all of the services that are available from Google Maps. If I have 
pictures that are available on Flickr, I can match that up with an account along with its website. So I can basically see, let's say, an insurance collision and I can see the company's website, etc., etc. So I can grab information from multiple sources and basically what it starts to do, it starts to merge the capabilities and services that are available on the internet as well as the specific services that are available <laughs> in each organization. Yeah. And we're aging, John, from a, a, a roadmap perspective as we look at the product. And what we like to say is that the, uh, the product is built with a Web 2, I mean an Enterprise 2 architecture based on standards with a, a Web 2 DNA throughout it. So that's the life. And, and as we look at even some use cases, and we've spoken with uh, medical groups and others, and looking at those enterprise applications uh, to, to move data back and forth, they look at large integration projects that have multi-million, five, six, seven million dollar price tags to do those integration projects. And so providing a platform that allows them to move information via SOA architectures and, and use the leverageability of those, uh, those architectures they're allowed to move information back and forth in those systems, so it's very cost effective and, and uh, it kind of short circuits those traditional uh, implementation models. Uh, where do you see uh, Spacious evolving to next? Really good question. I mean, there's a lot of things that we're working on um, as far as a product roadmap. You know, some of the, the some of the important things that Spacious does and that we talk about is that it helps um, capture. Uh, informal information or point in time information. So, you know, whether it's um, a discussion that's occurred, a meeting's occurred, a phone call, an email, those today, those things happen point in time and lost. So, Spacious gives you the opportunity to make them, uh, to turn them into reusable assets. So, in saying that, a lot of the things that we're looking for uh, in doing in the future is enhancing a lot of that functionality. So, uh, integrating much more natively into the way we work, whether it's um, instant messaging, email, or even using social platforms such as Facebook, um, Plaxo, uh, LinkedIn, etc. And then on top of that, it's like um, a big part of Spacious is also to be, uh, which we didn't talk about, was being related to different spaces. By having a relationship with a space, whether it's a customer or a project, I keep, uh, I'm kept informed um, with what's going on in that space within the communities in that space, much like a Twitter feed. Um, and some of the stuff we're doing around that is suggestion engines. So there could be things going on in my organisation. It could be 50,000 people talking about similar things that I should be keeping on top of. So some, putting some artificial intelligence in there so I can have suggestions coming my way um, around what what is something else that's going on out in, in the environment that you know, I might be interested in. So there's a whole bunch of initiatives around that, um, you know, a much richer environment, you know, with the advent of RIAs, etc. Well, to, but to throw it out there, though, I mean, if you are now bringing in uh, that level of, of um, social media interaction and communication and capturing all of that, uh, are you then uh, pulling in a sort of unexpected and potentially huge uh, compliance headache for enterprise administrators who then have to back all that up? I mean, is that something you're concerned about going forward? Is that something that's addressed within the platform? Uh, is, I mean, it, how, do you, how do you deal with that issue? Because it, it, it's, I mean, you know how much noise is online sure. in the social web, and if you're pulling that into the enterprise, mm -hmm. That's well, a lot. The, the spacious um, for a large organization or for an enterprise, Spacious is deployed as um, an internal application. So it's an internal resource. Um, it's not a hosted service for a large enterprise. For smaller and medium-sized businesses that want to have um, a hosted service, we'll be able to stand up a specific instance for them externally. But for a large organization internally, um, most of the content that they're generating will be coming from inside the company, not from outside. So when Rob was talking about being able to find um, information that is being that is relative to um, relative to what to what you're doing at any particular time, um, it's basically a, a suggestion engine um, that's based on information that is created inside the company, not just uh, you know something that's out there on a social uh, social site. But there's a lot of, there is a lot of features such as moderation and auditing capabilities for yes. compliance, etc. that's built into the application. You need to take those things into account. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of things again that have worked really well on the web, you know, the wisdom of the crowds that you certainly can adopt within your organization. So whether someone's talking rubbish 
it could actually be filtered by the others that know that they're talking rubbish, right? Just through voting and commenting and burying things that aren't relevant. So there's there's the uh, the features in the application that allow the community to filter information and for administration uh, administrators or or moderators to filter information as well. Okay. Well, uh, thanks so much for taking the time, guys. This is great. Thank uh, you. I appreciate it. Really appreciate it, Alex. Thanks. Oh, yeah. oh, look forward to it. Great.